So as you can tell, we are not in my kitchen or my house. We are actually in a condo on the beach, but in Mazatlan, Mexico. One of my favorite ways to cook is to go to the market and let the market tell me what it wants me to make. I don't want to follow a recipe to make a drink. I just want to have like something that's really, really fruity, fresh, and delicious. And that's what we're going to be making today. This is fresh coconut water. A little bit of the flesh still in there. All I'm gonna do is take the coconut water and throw it in. And I'm not exactly sure how much coconut flesh I'm gonna use because when I'm doing this without the alcohol, I wanna have like a really thick, beautiful coconut smoothie, but I don't wanna make a cocktail that's like super thick and heavy. I think I'm gonna put most of this bag and see what happens. Yeah, let's try it. I will actually, I am gonna save a little bit of coconut water just in case I need to thin it out. So whenever I'm developing recipes, um, and not just for cocktails, but anything, I always taste as I go. So I'll have in my head what I want it to taste like, and then I'll taste it, and then I'll see what it needs. So I'm actually not mad at this particular texture. It's not super thick, it's not super creamy. I know we're in a good place. I'm gonna taste it to see how sweet we are. Ooh, that's really good. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm gonna give it a pinch of salt. The reason I'm giving it the salt is because the salt is gonna help you taste all of those rich, delicious coconutty flavors. And then I'm going to also add a little bit of sugar. I don't want a ton of sugar. I don't want it to be super sweet. Also, the, uh, the liquor is going to add a little bit of sweetness. Let's start with half a teaspoon of sugar. That'll just bring out all of those rich coconutty sweet flavors. Okay. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. All right, just a touch more sugar. And then I love the flavor of allspice. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be adding, but you can, you don't have to necessarily use a dry spice in this. I think it just kind of adds another little sort of tropical element. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put four allspice berries in there. All right, now let's see where we are. Oh, wow, that's really, really good. Okay, so, it's called sweet heat. We need a little heat. I got some ginger and some chiltepin chiles, which are super, super hot. The ginger is obviously like super fresh. I couldn't decide in the moment what I wanted, but now that I've tasted the flavors, I think I am gonna use a little bit of ginger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel a little bit. The only reason why I am peeling this is because I don't want it to impact the, um, the look and feel of the drink. I want it to be really, really nice and clean looking. I don't want little bits of the brown skin to be floating in there. I'm just gonna cut off a little piece. I don't need a lot of it. I wanna taste more of the coconut than anything else, but I think the, the ginger is gonna give you a really nice little fresh counterpoint that's gonna cut through the richness of the coconut. Now let's see where we are. Ooh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. So the first thing you get is the really beautiful, creamy, coconutty flavor. Then you get a little bit of the allspice and then you just get this really gentle, gingery finish. It was really, really beautiful. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with half a cup of the thicker coconutty mixture. And I'm gonna thin it out with a quarter cup of the coconut water. All right, so this is essentially now going to be our base. 
So I've decided that I'm gonna use a brown liquor. Uh, I'm actually using bourbon. You can use whiskey, you can bourbon, you can use rye, but you know, use a white rum, use whatever you have. Like this is, this is all about improv around what you like to drink. So I'm gonna start with one ounce. I'm gonna give it a little mix and I'm gonna see where we are. It's a really nice color. It's a really nice consistency. Ooh, oh, that's very nice. Okay. All right, so I think I'm good with that. I'm gonna put a little bit of an orange liqueur in just to give it some balance. So I'm gonna do a half an ounce of this orange liqueur. So now I'm going to add in some lime. So I always measure everything. Um, and so I'm gonna just squeeze the lime into my measuring container. I'm gonna do half an ounce of lime juice. Now that I've got the lime juice, the uh, orange liqueur and the bourbon in there, we've got a really nice texture that has body, but it's still thin enough so you're not gonna feel like you're, you're drinking eggnog. Cause that's the thing about eggnog that I love, but um, you drink one glass and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm full now, thanks. Oh, wow. That is, that's crazy. Oh, mm. that is amazing. That little bit of lime just catapulted it into this whole other territory. So now we're definitely at the beach. We're having a coconut lime cocktail. That is really, really good. Okay, I am going to add a little bit more ginger and a little bit more sugar, and then we're gonna put it over ice and finish it off. I don't understand why these little holes exist, because like, really, what? Why manufacturers of box, box graters, why did you make these tiny little holes that hold on to all the things that you create? This is why we use microplanes and not these tiny little holes. We'll see how that tastes. Mm. Oh my God, it's so good, yum, all right. Okay, this is the moment that I've actually been waiting for, is the time when I get to, oh, it smells so good. Oh. Okay, you have to smell this too, cause like, so Sebas is actually the person that introduced me mm. to Suaves. Mm. Suaves are basically an institution here in Mazatlan. They are coconut marshmallows that originated here, and they're just these really, really soft, coconut marshmallows. And you can see they have like little flecks of toasted fresh coconut in there. So because we are making a coconut cocktail, obviously I wanted to uh, do something with the suaves. We're simply gonna dip a suave into the tajin. And so we'll get a little bit of sweet heat action on our marshmallow. So tajin is a chili and salt blend. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip one side in the cocktail and shake off the excess and let's go in and coat the sides. Oh, it's like super cool. Okay, I'm excited to taste it all together with the ice. Wow. Mmm. Oh my god. It's just a really, really pleasant, cold, sipping cocktail that you want to just like lay in a lounge, listen to the waves crashing, and um, it's really, really good. All right, one down, two to go. Next up, the hibiscus something spicy cocktail. We'll find out. <laughs> one of the things that I get asked really often is, um, love making cocktails, but what about for when I'm not drinking or for my friends who don't drink? Um, what about a good mocktail? This is one that has so much flavor. It's really delicious. I actually almost like it better as um, just a, a 
punch or a really good drink without any alcohol. Uh, but you can easily throw in some mezcal or some tequila and turn it into a really delicious cocktail as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off making a syrup. I love making flavored syrups, but because I'm gonna do this for one, I don't want to dirty a saucepan. And the main thing also is I don't want to have to wait until the thing cools down and I don't want to cook my jalapeno. I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of sugar. I put in a quarter cup of really hot tap water. And I'm just gonna swirl this around just to get it nice and sort of melted. It doesn't have to completely dissolve. And now I'm gonna drop in one hibiscus flower, which I think should be enough to give us flavor and color. So I threw in a couple, not just one. <laughs> And now, I think I'm just gonna cut some little rings of jalapeno. I was gonna say, I love the combination of sweet and heat, obviously, since that's the name of the show, but I do actually really like making syrups with different chiles. Okay, so now I'm gonna give this a little shake. Right, just in case, not that this is hot, not that I care about the heat so much as I care about getting this all over the cameras and my shirt. Okay, let's see. Ooh, it's actually kind of spicy. One of the things that's really great about these recipes is it's already going to be made in an Airbnb. So if you're traveling, you shouldn't need any special equipment. You should be able to like use whatever you have access to. Um, this is about as good as I can get for a muddler, but it's totally fine. We're just gonna put everything in here, mix it up. It's gonna be great. So I'm just taking some cucumber. I love cucumber so much. And I feel like when it's in a drink, it's like super refreshing. I'm also going to make some little lime wheels. And I'll throw those in. And then I've got this beautiful mint. I'm gonna throw some of this in. Okay, so let's just go at it. Let's see if this works. Okay, so this sucked. <laughs> So not gonna use that anymore. So now I am improvising yet again. I'm transferring this to a bowl and I'm just gonna use the glass to muddle. So now I know for certain that I'm going to get like all of the squishy delicious flavor that I was wanting. So as I was crushing or muddling this, I was like, you know what? I really want this to be served over crushed ice, but I was like, I would normally just fill up a Ziploc freezer bag with ice and then just use my rolling pin and smash it. Um, I know I don't have a rolling pin, I, and actually I don't have any zip top bags here. I do have a grocery bag and I have this knife block, so we're actually gonna see if that works. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Are you going to leave all the knives in the knife block? <laughs> 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 um, all right, here we go. And crushed ice, yay! Oh my God, I'm so happy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of this in the bottom and then we'll put some ice. And then we'll put some of our mixture. It's like we're building a little parfait cocktail. And a little bit more. A little bit more more and then because I always have Topo Chico in the house Topo mm, Chico Mmm Wow that was really good here you want to taste mm hmm I was like not what I expected it's not it's just like really, it's really refreshing. I see. This is really good. Yeah. It is really refreshing. <laughs> yeah. is. The great thing about this is that you can sip on this and then when you're ready, just add a shot of mezcal or tequila and then boom, it's five o'clock happy hour. 
One more to go. This is going to be our grapefruit, habanero, shandy, paloma, something, something, something. <laughs> Stay tuned. So I wanted to get this going because I actually wanted to make a more of a legit uh, simple syrup, but I want to infuse this with habanero. So I'm gonna get the syrup going right now. So it's half a cup of water, quarter cup of sugar. I don't need it to be like super sweet. I just want it to be a medium that I can extract as much flavor from the habanero as possible. So once that comes to the boil and all the sugar's melted, I'll add in the gut habanero. So I actually just remembered that I also wanted to put cinnamon there, which is actually the reason why I wanted to make a real simple syrup because in order to get the flavor of the cinnamon, I actually do need to boil the water. This is the way I make really beautiful camera ready uh, citrus wedges. So, you know, like I think probably most of us, if you're gonna cut um, a wedge for a drink, you probably just cut it in half and then cut a little segment out. Um, but what a lot of food stylists do is they make a straight cut down the center um, to the midpoint of the citrus and then come in at an angle. And that gives you this really, really beautiful wedge that you can then stick into a glass and everybody thinks, oh my God, that's so beautiful. It's totally camera ready. I'm just gonna cut some grapefruit wedges. So this is about ready to go. I'm now going to cut my habanero. I'm going to go ahead and throw the habanero in with the cinnamon and we will get a really nice spicy syrup. So the syrup has cooked down and it's kind of syrupy and it smells incredible. The habanero is obviously quite potent that's exactly what I want. So I've taken it off the heat. I'm throwing in my beautiful grapefruit zest. And now I'm going to juice my grapefruit. I'm going to put an ounce of my mezcal. And we'll put that at the bottom. I don't want it to be super strong because I'm also putting beer in there. Um, this is another one of those poolside drinks that, you know, once you've had your spot water in the morning and you've graduated up into the afternoon, this is what you want to ease into. Um, I'm going to get some ice. I think for this one, I'm going to use the big cubes. There we go. Okay, great. And now I'm going to put in my beautiful grapefruit juice. Sound is so satisfying. And now I'm going to throw in some syrup. I think I want this one to be a little bit sweeter than the other two, just because I like sweetness. And also there's a lot of flavor in there. Just give that a little spinny spin. I'm really excited about this one. I did not anticipate that it was gonna be as pretty as it is, like the sort of ombre effect of the grapefruit, the beer, and the mezcal at the bottom. So, here we go. Wow. Oh my God. It's gonna sound really strange, but like the, the sweetness and the beer go really well together. Like it's, um, you get a little bit of cinnamon, you get a lot of habanero, you get that sweetness, but you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know whether it's a really sweet grapefruit or it's that simple syrup. And then you get that really nice pacifico kind of floating on top. I think I get a little bit of the mezcal. I think it's probably more towards the bottom. All three can be made alcoholic, all three can be non-alcoholic. They're all three going to be really, really delicious. And you can make them anywhere, clearly, because I basically use like sticks and stones to make these drinks. Um, they're super easy, they're super delicious, and I'm 
I'm actually kind of proud of myself that I made three drinks on the fly without a recipe and I would 100% make these again. And if you like me, if you like this recipe and you want to see more, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. And in the comments down below, let me know what you want to see more of. If you want to see me go to the market and find three random ingredients and make that into a meal, Tell me if you want to know how to care for your cutting board or revive a rusty old cast iron skillet, let me know. I want to make a Sweet Heat episode based on your comments, so let me know what you want to see.